The Cutting Edge Premium War Bond is available and that means new armors and weapons to protect our way of life. Today we are going to have a look at the first unlockable weapon on the list, which will be the Last 16 Sickle. If you are having difficulty sharing managed democracy with this tool, don't worry at all Helldivers, I'm here for you. The War Bond is 1000 super credits, that's $999. If you have saved those credits while doing the missions, it shouldn't be too difficult to unlock it. The sickle itself is extremely affordable at 20 War Bonds and can be found at the first page of the War Bond. That means if you have the Cutting Edge Premium War Bond, you can unlock the sickle pretty much almost immediately. But also remember to subscribe and like for democracy. Let's look a little bit towards the stats. The Sickle is an energy-based rifle with a very different way of working when compared to the Sights or the Rover. The base damage is 55, has a fire rate of 750 with light armor penetration. Essentially, it does the same damage and covers the same job as the Liberator, albeit with a higher fire rate and much less recoil. The sickle doesn't use ammo, it can be fired continually until it heats up. If it goes past the limit, a new heat sink needs to be reloaded, the heat goes down naturally if it's not fired. The weapon needs to be spooled up before firing, though it can be shot in bursts after the initial spool up. You will drop initially with 6 heat sinks. In the reload options, the sickle has 3 distance reticles at 25, 50 and 100 meters, though I'd say that the 50 and 100 meter reticles might be the best choices and also remember that the weapon spread gets better with aiming down sights rather than using it in third person. Because this weapon doesn't have any recoil at all, with short bursts this spread is incredibly tight. Though keep an eye close to the heatsink status that is close to the weapon icon on the bottom left. As the weapon gets hotter, the heatsink icon becomes more filled up. When it gets stuck at maximum with the red icon, it means it needs a new replacement dropped in. The way it works, and in terms of stats, it is remarkably similar to the Liberator. And because its war bond cost is relatively low, all things considered, therefore it can be an excellent drop-in replacement to the starting Liberator. Though, keep in mind that the Sickle is impacted by planetary heat modifiers. It can be run longer in cold environments, likewise planets with high heat will have the inverse effect. Let's talk about tactics when using the sickle and what I found while using it. As it is essentially energy-based liberator, all the tactics you have employed for the liberator need to be employed for the sickle. It has very low penetration, that means that everything that is hive guards, for example, and above are absolutely immune to the sickle. The hive guards tuck up when being shot against, which means that the stance can be exploited to hit the weak points. From scavengers to brute commanders, this weapon can definitely cause some havoc, though its lack of damage per second compared to other weapons in the game, and its heat management has to be mentioned. The Terminids, they liked to attack in hordes, with most of them being very good at close quarters. At higher difficulties, the dynamics of the drop change when most of the high priority bugs that spawn will have either a medium armor or above, or a large hit pool to be destroyed. In certain planets, a large influx of brute commanders and especially the annoying spewers will become the norm. In this case, the sickle will become incredibly underpowered as it requires significant continuous amount of firepower to down just one of these more elite unarmed terminates. When they attack in hordes, the sickle by itself will be absolutely underperforming as it is definitely not able to down an incoming horde at a distance and almost unable to do it up close and personal without some acrobatics. Heat management will become extremely important with multiple pauses in between, showing the issues it has alone against the terminates. When paired with an auto cannon, for example, or any weapon able to deal with the crowd control or has extremely high DPS against the bugs, it becomes a reliable tool in the arsenal. Like any other weapon currently in the weapon roster, it's the stratagem synergy that will make the difference. For the automatons, this weapon is extremely versatile and shows more of its strengths. Automatons tend to have defined weak points that can be exploited. 
They also prefer long-range engagements when running around the map, which in turn means that the weapon accuracy in conjunction with the low spread, even some of the more elite bots can be put down as long as the weak points are shot against the force. The regular rank and file soldiers like commissars, raiders and troopers will go down with a few shots, faster when shooting against the head of course. The berserkers can also be down in a few bursts but words of caution, as these bot bastards tend to attack in groups, the heat management needs to be kept in check. When shooting at a distance, they aren't really much of an issue and will go down extremely fast. Believe it or not, every Devastator can be put down with some well-placed shots to the head or to the back. Even the Heavy Devastator with that large shield can be put down surprisingly easily by shooting the head or its backpack. With less than half of a sink and oftentimes just a couple of bursts, they will go down. The Rocket Devastator isn't much of any issue when shooting against as well, the Rocket Pots can be destroyed, the head and back are weak points, if you shoot them, they will go down in a couple of bursts. The Hulk though will require a little more of tactical forethought, its front, including the eye, seems to be completely protected against the sickle, the heat sink at the back can absolutely be exploited even at large distances with a continuous burst between half to an almost full sink. So that means for these more elite types in the automaton side, having a good accuracy is definitely a must. Therefore, I'd recommend you to get acquainted with the sights for the best efficiency, once again between 50 and 100 meters radicals. Therefore, the sickle usability between sides really is going to depend against the type of enemy and the loadout being carried. It doesn't have the same short and medium range destructibility or DPS like the Punisher, the Breaker or even the submachine gun. Weapons that can easily delete almost any type of foe at close quarters, including some of the annoyances that are the bile spewers. To increase the survivability rates and usefulness of the sickle, consider having stratagems that can help deliver high amounts of democratic crowd control. For terminids, any machine gun, the autocannon, the rover, or if you are feeling particularly spicy, the flamethrower or the arc thrower. Other crowd control stratagems can be useful, but need to be used further away because the shortcomings of the sickle are definitely around the CQB range, therefore you need to thin the herd. Consider also a shield generator to fight against the bile spewer acid. For the automatons, since the weapon is very much usable at almost any range and pretty much against everything bar the tank, the amount of choices for stratagem loadout increases. It can be run with or without any support weapons, but I'd recommend running at least uh, the shield generator. Because this weapon is so much more versatile against the automatons, the stratagem loadout can have more choices to delete structures or more armored enemies at the distance with options like the orbital strikes, lasers, eagle strikes, or even sentries. In short, Helldivers, this is a great choice to substitute the Liberator if you enjoy running it. It has better overall stats that come attached with downsides that more or less rounds it up to a decently useful weapon. It doesn't have the DPS of a breaker, but it does have the accuracy to make up for it somewhat. But let us know below if you like it, what have been your experiences with the sickle and what stratagem loadouts you use with it. If you enjoy this type of content, remember sub and like so we can share our way of life.